Welcome to the Hyper Growth Zone podcast. This is your go-to resource for personal growth, mastering communication, and influencing and persuasion techniques that will help you unleash the full potential of yourself and others. Here is your host, Alex Morgan. Welcome to another episode of the Hyper Growth Zone Podcast. My name is Alex Morgan, and I'm a Master Trainer of Hypnosis and NLP. And on this episode, let's welcome Aaron Markham. He has founded and scaled several multi-million dollar businesses. In 2015, he had reached financial success, but was burned out and struggling to find sustainable happiness. From that point on, he decided to make drastic changes that helped propel his success. One of them was finishing a Master of Applied Positive Psychology from the University of Pennsylvania and studying under Dr. Martin Seligman, the father of positive psychology. Combining his entrepreneurial expertise along with his unique positive psychology background, he has developed the entrepreneur's eight laws to eliminate unhealthy stress so they can flourish personally and create the good life. His book, Entre Thrive, specializes in helping entrepreneurs achieve happy, satisfying, and meaningful lives through their keynotes, Entre Circle, Master Learning Forms, and courses. All right, Aaron, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate you being here. I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Alex, for having me on. Awesome. So I wanted to touch on a few things today, and one of that being your book, Entre Thrive. And one of the things, just right off the page here, it says there's a myth that the entrepreneur can flourish either in life or business, and it kind of takes this either or. So can you explain, you also say that people have to kind of go towards suffering for something. And I teach my students a lot of times as well that, well, there can be a lot of good things about things and pleasure and all this. So can you kind of explain that either or and how someone might be able to have it all? Yeah, yeah, you know. I call it the lie of the either or, because as entrepreneurs, we live this lie that that either we can flourish personally or we can flourish professionally, but we can't have both. And unfortunately for entrepreneurs, we pick the professional side, right? We like, hey, let's go all in professionally and grind it out. And eventually my personal well-being will catch up. And that was me back in 2015. I was like doing really well. Uh, financially, my business was growing. We were making a lot of traction in the in the home care space, but personally, I was overweight. I was not doing well. I wasn't thriving personally. And in 2016, I had to call it my accelerated journey. Like from 2015 to 2016. In fact, I made a LinkedIn post today showing I had a picture of 2015 and my picture of 2016. I was on my my I went and got into cycling. And it's drastically different, you know, and I continue to be on this journey, on this accelerated journey. And I feel like acceleration is easier than the slow kind of growth, but that's a whole nother topic. But the line of the either or is like, I, I, I have to keep grinding it out. And what happens is you just burn out and your business really never grows. So when I started investing in myself personally in 2016, guess what happened? You could see this hockey stick growth in my business. And my leadership team and those people who knew me best, they'll tell you to this day that when they really saw changes in the business is when they also saw changes on Aaron and that I was doing much better personally, the way I interacted with them, I looked better, I felt better. And so that's kind of the book taking, you know, sharing a lot of personal experiences, but also bringing in positive psychology. So I, a few years later, fascinated with the field of positive psychology. I went back to school, never thought as an entrepreneur, I didn't have a master's degree, but I, I got a master's degree from UPenn uh, in positive psychology. Studied it under Martin Seligman, who's the father of positive psychology. And so now having this kind of well-rounded perspective of the science of well-being and applying it to entrepreneurship, well, it gave me a kind of a new lens as well. And that's what the book really kind of ties all that together. Cool. Thanks for that. And also the the book, it essentially touches on eight 
laws. So these are kind of like habits and practices so the entrepreneur can achieve all of these things. Can you touch on a few that are really important to you? Yeah, I, I call them my timeless concepts, right? Or timeless principles that have been around for a long time, but the way I kind of organize them in the book and provide the science behind them, why they work. So the first law, I call it the the cornerstone law is the law of entrepreneurial clarity or entre clarity. And it's really all about getting clear on what we call our guiding truths. And guiding truths are those principles or things that that are kind of immovable for you. For example, one of my guiding truths, my first one is my mind is a piece. Like I need to be constantly striving for that piece. My life is filled with abundance is another one. My family receives of my time is another one. My ventures create freedom is, is another. I have nine of them in my guiding truths. And so I walk through people on how to establish those, which should really drive your core values in your business. You should have your guiding truths first. Then you can really establish some amazing core values that, that are aligned with those guiding truths. So that's the first one. Uh, the second one is create um, the law of entre create or entrepreneurial creativity. If we're not creating as entrepreneurs, we're not happy. Uh, we're suffering. And so creation is key to, to, to create the space to create, like deep dives into a topic or something that a, a new product offering, creating new um, ways of doing things, problem solving, all those things are, are, you know, require creativity. But when we're in our business so much every day, putting out fires, it's hard to, to thrive without that creative uh, mindset. You know, I have grit is an important one. I have five levels of grit from curiosity to calling, and there's everything in between. And when you're called, your staying power is is pretty incredible. You know, passion is the fourth level, calling's the fifth. A lot of people just get to the passion phase, and that's awesome. But when you're called, that's where you serve others. That's where you're contributing at a, at a, just a higher level. Um, and then the uh, I have faith as, as one of the laws, entre faith. That's faith in yourself, faith in others, and faith in God. And when you have that trifecta, you know, you can do amazing things. And like, you know, and the science does back that uh, uh, faith in a higher power does add to our well being. Habits, entre habits, uh, those are, it's a, I, my approach to habits in the book are quite unique. And if you, you know, even if you just read that chapter alone, you're going to get, I think, quite a bit out of the book. And the book's got written so that you can almost pop into any chapter and really glean quite a bit from it. That's how I wrote it. We are busy entrepreneurs. Sometimes we can't read from front to cover. So, but, but Entre Habits, that's all about doing the um, habits. We call them character strengths and positive psychology, but creating strengths like love and leadership and spirituality we're running in the background unconsciously and i talk about how important that is that if we can have those things running in our lives every day unconsciously our ability to expand our ability to grow as entrepreneurs is, is exponential so that one's that one's a real pow powerful concept bigger seventh law that's all about mind and body alignment Getting your mind and control your body. Joe Dispenza's work is kind of included in that uh, chapter. Love Joe Dispenza's work, and then uh, then the last one is agency, and that's one that Marty uh, Martin Seligman really feels strongly about. That without it, we're kind of lost as a, as a society, and so tapping into our imagination, into our self-efficacy, which is a positive psychology term, but really just more believing in ourselves, you know, and then. And then the last one, is, or the second one, is optimism. It's really self-advocacy, optimism, and imagination that Marty kind of points out. And optimism is all about seeing things as like setbacks as temporary rather than permanent. That's how I look at optimism. That's how Marty looks at optimism. You can still be a realist and be an optimist. I think optimism gets kind of a bad rap sometimes, um, but it's really looking at your setbacks and challenges as temporary, knowing that you can overcome them or get around them or whatever you know, analogy you want to use. So those are the eight laws. Uh, they, uh, and I just don't, and it's the personal stories in the book as well as bringing the science. And it's, uh, 
it hit Amazon's number one bestseller a couple of weeks ago in a, in a few categories. It's really doing well. So, yeah. Congratulations. That's awesome. I picked up the book right before we're recording this. So I'm definitely going to read it. There's two of the laws that I, I'm i actually pretty interested in the, the, the guiding habits when you're working with your, when you're coaching your clients. Is that like one of the first things that you help them with to kind of, you know, to give them direction? How does that fit into actually what you do with yeah. people? And the other thing I want to is the kind of the science you mentioned. We can touch on that next, but I want to hear about the yeah. guiding habits of it first. Yeah. The guiding, you're talking about the guiding truths. The guiding truths, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And clarity in the clarity law. That is the first thing because that guides everything else, right? That's why I call them, I call them my guiding truths is that once those are established, so we go through a, a series of questions we have, and you can put it in your show notes at entrethrive.com forward slash hyper growth zone we actually have that guide you can download that has all the questions that i ask my clients and that they ask we're actually building out an ai tool that i'm pretty excited about that will help them do it even a better job of uh building those out that's probably a couple months away from being being complete but the guiding truths are all about what do you want to be true about you at all times Things that these can be some aspirational, but for the most part, you want those things to be true about yourself now. But we also, I believe there that aspirational is not a negative thing, right? Like, what do you want to be true? Because when I established these guiding truths, I don't think my mind was at peace at the time. I was burned out and I needed some direction. And I had a good mentor help me establish. Back then, I called them my declarations. I've retooled them since then. I've had them for 15 years. I've only want, made one change. I used to have a, I added uh, my ventures create freedom as my ninth guiding truth. Um, but the, all the other eight have been with me for 15 years. And so, yeah, some of them were aspirational back then, but now I feel like I'm really leading into all of them. And I constantly check my decisions against them. So if I'm making a business decision or if I'm um, personal or professional, I say, okay, is this going to help me live a life of abundance? One of my guiding truths. Is this going to rob my time with my family? You know, is this going to require my evenings, my weekends? Well, it's an if if so, it's a no for me. Especially at this point in my career, I don't need to be doing that. I'm on 51, and I I've been an entrepreneur for 22 years, and so that's really important to me. I have six kids, and so it's important for me to spend time. And so those are the things I check with. And again, they download that guide. They can really, um, they can get some of the the key questions for that. No, thanks for that. And I was, I was, I was waiting for you to in that explanation to mention family because I thought for many people and entrepreneurs, especially, it's a kind of a tug of war until they really find the right balance between saying no and then being with the family and all of this. So, with the you mentioned the science behind a few things. So. What science is there that shows that, you know, specifically how entrepreneurs are happy or what makes them happy? Is there a few things you can touch on yeah. for that to really show people like, hey, there's evidence of this stuff here? Yeah. So when I was uh, going through my master's of applied positive psychology at UPenn, my entire capstone was based upon the science behind entrepreneurial well-being. And some of the science has been out there for quite a while, but Science behind autonomy, for example, there's so much research that's been done that if you take autonomy away from an entrepreneur and that freedom, especially early on in their journey, their likelihood of quitting is just is exponential. It goes up. And so, and the challenge is when we first start a business, our autonomy is, can be pretty tight, right? And we're kind of at other people's mercy. And this is why some of the companies that get a lot of capital early on and can get the right people in the right seats. They survive, not this, not because they have a great product necessarily, and, and maybe they do, I'm not saying they don't, but more importantly, the entrepreneur or the visionary can really truly be the visionary and have the autonomy to be in what Dan Sullivan, who's my coach, um, or strategic coach, what he calls the unique ability. You know, you can be in your unique ability as an entrepreneur and have that autonomy to do so, your well-being, your life satisfaction, your the good life is more 
it, it, it's more realized in that in that situation. And so that's really important. Another key factor, and this is not just for entrepreneurs. There's a great book called The Good Life that was written last year. I don't know if you've, you've read that one, Alex, but wonderful book um, based upon the longest study, Harvard study in the world, 88 years, I believe, where they studied the well-being of, of people over a course of like 88-year period and what contributed to their good life. Number one contributor is our relationships. So, and actually... I gave you seven laws. The fourth law really is, and I can't believe I, I missed this one, but it's the, one of the most important is entre connections or entrepreneurial connections. And so I talk a lot about the science behind why connections as an entrepreneur are so important. So if you find yourself in your business and you are so busy with your head down, focused on projects and what you need to do, and you're not connecting with your team on a daily basis, Jane Dutton, the great psychologist, calls it high-quality connections. So if we're not having those daily high-quality connections, our well-being suffers, and so does the well-being of our team. And so those relationships, asking them not just about their day, but even if it's work-related, it's like being meaningful in those connections. What are you frustrated with? How can I help you? How can I help so help you solve this, this challenge? Rather than those, um, those connections where, why didn't this happen? Where are your numbers? You know, those are, those are, can be negative. We need to have enough of those high quality connections so that when we do need to talk to them about their numbers, it's meaningful as well. And that they, we have a high trust between that relationship. So our relationships and our personal relationships of, of entrepreneurs are even more important. And so investing in those, I mentioned in 2016, I did that for myself and my family and everyone was elevated in the process. Now, when you're working with people in your business, are you using a lot of these things backed by science? Plus, you have some other very high-level coaching. I, I know uh, the name that you threw out there, Dan Sullivan, all of this. So how do you kind of mix this all together to ensure people yeah. get the results that they want? That's ultimately what's yeah. important is the results. Yeah, results are really important. So positive psychology is really the science of human behavior, human I would say human behavior, but human well-being. Um, why do some people thrive and why do some people don't? So I use the science to back up, again, a term we use in positive psychology, positive interventions. So I, I use it in the entrepreneurial space, various gratitude interventions, various, you know, I already talked about the guiding truths. I have a term called the breakaway. I have a whole program for, for home care entrepreneurs called the breakaway accelerator. And it's helping people break free from where they are today into a bigger and brighter future. And so to get there, though, so breakaway is my term. It's not a scientific term. It's what I use. But how I go about it is often based in science. I wouldn't call my work even like it does. It could fit in both the self-help as well as the well-being science side of it. That's why I went back and got educated rather than just reading books that, you know, I'm a big Tony Robbins fan. I'm a big, you know, Dean Graciosi, all those guys, uh, Matthew McConaughey, you know, people who are in more in the self-help kind of field. I think they have do great work. And a lot of the things to say is you could take it and say, okay, that is based in science. But I married kind of the two between that and Martin Seligman. You know, who is the father of positive psychology or um, Al Bender and people who are more known in the psychology space and kind of back up these kind of interventions or positive interventions that I do with my my clients and programs that I, I put together. So with these programs and uh, interventions, do you normally see people gravitate towards a few of the eight laws more than others, or do you work through all of those uh, equally, what do you kind of see with this? Because obviously you said like well, relationships are super important, the guiding truths, like these obviously kind of set off a, off a light bulb for some people, but maybe for the others, they're like, yeah, you know what? I want to go with a few of the others more. So how does that kind of yeah. work into everything? That's a great, I've never had that question. That's a great question. I would definitely say the first one, and that's probably because I push it the most right out of the gate, um, with clarity and, and the guiding truths. Connections being also a very important one, but I push one that often falls off the radar. I call it the keystone, not the cornerstone. So entrepreneurship is the cornerstone, the keystone law, 
that holds everything together is the last one. And that's the agency one. Is that if you don't have that autonomy, that freedom, and you also aren't empowered to take full responsibility for, for all your actions, you know, that extreme ownership kind of approach. I, I talk about that in that chapter. Your business is never going to grow beyond your thinking. And so if you're stuck in that thinking and you feel like you're limited on everything that you're doing within your company, and then you don't have the freedom or the agency to make, to really set your destiny, then your, your, your business is never going to grow beyond that. And, uh, Ed, my lad, I heard him say one time, so your, your business will never grow beyond your thinking. And I say that to entrepreneurs and in the home care space, your home care business will never grow beyond your thinking. And so that agency to me, hold people back in so many ways. And when they rob themselves in this day and age, it's usually the entrepreneur takes their own agency away. It's not usually an external threat. Now we had COVID that did play into that, right? It took some agency, but you, the entrepreneurs who, who just saw that as temporary, we just saw that as a, a momentary setback. Their businesses thrived during that time. I had a business that thrived during that time. I invested in during that time into other businesses because I thought saw it as an opportunity. And so this is it's just a different kind of way of looking at things and mindset. And so that's one I, I they don't necessarily gravitate to, but I I push them to. You know, I really kind of like this is extremely important. Take them through exercises, some, some positive interventions to help them understand and start creating habits within themselves and the way they're thinking towards it. And you mentioned to the freedom, autonomy, and people who don't achieve those things are being held back. So the people that you're helping, what are some common things that you hear where you're like, okay, here's another person, they're getting held back by this. Is there common things yeah. that you see come up that you're like, oh, here we go again. But hey, since I know how to help them, it's easy to get the results. Yeah. yeah I, I would say, I, I don't know if I would say it number one, because it really varies, but uh, people don't love themselves enough. Uh, there, there's, and, and in the entrepreneurial space, they've second guessed themselves because their their confidence in themselves and, and their abilities that we hear this term self-love, but I really believe that it's, it's an important term and partly because they're not accepting of who they are today. If we, if, and that's what holds them back is they're like, they have this big dream of where they want to go, but they haven't even accepted who they are today. So self-acceptance is really important and being aware of who you are today and, and being open and vulnerable right now to who you are today so that you can make the changes necessary to grow into the future. And so the, the self, you know, not loving themselves, not accepting themselves, which they're, those are two aligned, very well connected. I actually touch, touch on this in the clarity law because, you know, it's important to get clear on who you are today so that you can grow up for the future into the future. And so that's one I see consistently uh, or those are, are things I see um, consistently. And some of them are, um, they they externally seem confident, seem self, like, like really self-confident, but when you really pull back the layers, their their self-esteem is in, in, in the toilet. They, um, and I, and the first sign when I, when I'm working with somebody or I'm talking with somebody as they start not, Sometimes it comes in the form of blame or blaming team members for some of their problems. That's usually tied to their own self-esteem. They're not, they're, they don't have the confidence to take the ownership yet. And so they're blaming others, but they're also maybe putting down other competitors or other, they're just really externally like, here's, you know, they're doing this or they're, you know, this is. You know, I don't like the way they do this. I, I like the way I do or the way that, you know, the way I operate, you know, and they're really just not self-reflective. And that's you like, ah, uh, yeah, I see, I see where this is going. And so helping them go more inward and say, okay, who are you today? And, and, and what do we need to know about you today? And the good, bad, and the ugly right now, you know, and I think that's, and I'm not a counselor. I don't, I don't go about it that way. Uh, you know, I'm not a licensed therapist, 
but there are some things that we have to unpack in order for them to grow their company, you know, go to the next level, especially because if they don't want to show up with their best selves, every, you know, every day in the office, it, it trickles down to the team for sure. No, definitely it can trickle down to the team. I was on a podcast recently discussing some of these same things. Like if you own a business and you're good, then chances are that's also going to, you know, the team will feed off that as well. So what are some of the the, the common results that you see um, these people you're working with? What do they expect when they, you know, work with you? You know, my subtitle of my book is The Eight Laws to Accelerate Financial Freedom While Creating the Good Life. And so the results, and again, I, I quote Dan a lot because he is, you know, I see Dan every quarter, Dan Sullivan, um, he's my coach. Coaches need coaches, right? And Dan has this concept called the four freedoms. And the four freedoms are the freedom of time, money, relationships, and purpose. And I actually have added this fifth. I should probably tell Dan this, but health. Like health is really important uh, for me. It's really those five freedoms that I, that's the outcome that I want and that I actually do see quite a bit of. And that they can accelerate their financial freedom while still creating a good life for themselves. And this, uh, you know, and by incorporating these laws, sometimes you have to go slow to go fast. And in fact, often you do. And you can still accelerate in that process. Is that to go slow for me back in 2016 is that I had to really focus on my health. And I started cycling. And by the end of the year, I was doing a 200 mile bike race, you know. So I did accelerate, but I had to stop. Go slow, figure some things out, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to focus on, what my breakaways were going to be, and then accelerate um, from there. And by 2018, I took a seven-week sabbatical, so I had freedom of time. I, I left my laptop on my desk, didn't check in once, and my businesses grew. And so it's, it's you know, I'm, I'm an investor as well on, in, in other businesses, and I try to advocate this with the people I work with. Is that, uh, and I, you know, I have a great case study with with a company I'm partner with. I'm actually an investor in, where she was able to get her time back. She didn't have her evenings and weekends, and now she's she's got a lot more time. Not just time for her family, but more time to spend doing things in her business that she wants to do, and that's part of her unique ability. And so it's uh, it's really to me that is. The best thing about what I do and the most gratifying part of what I do as an entrepreneur slash coach is to see those kinds of results, those five freedoms. Yeah, I think freedom is what it's all about. It's what I'm kind of always striving for and, and going yeah. towards. And that's why, um, you know, I like to live in different places and kind of have like a location. Uh, freedom is how I think of it as well. Now, that's great. Yeah. Freedom doesn't mean like, I'm not being hypocritical and saying this. I do have a beautiful home and all that. That's secondary. Freedom's what is in what what's freedom to you? You know, living in Greece, you know, what a great, you know, and then moving to a new place every, every I don't know how often you, you move around, but uh that's freedom for you. What what a great, you know, freedom. I have a very successful entrepreneurial friend who is a nomad. He actually has you know, he was telling me that. His, he has a pair of skis he keeps at his parents' house. He's in his, his late 20s, younger guy, very successful, multi million dollar. Uh, he's not an entrepreneur, but just a nomad. He and his girlfriend just travel the world every three or four weeks. They're someplace different. And, uh, and you know, he's part of the, the group I, with Dan Solo. He's part of that group. And so it's, it's, that's freedom for him. And it's inspirational to hear him talk about it. So that's a, that's a great point because my, my freedom is going to be completely different to someone else. They may think, like, well, why would I have one location freedom? I want my house or I want this where yeah. I'm more of, yeah, exactly. I want to experience. I, I live for experiences. I live for traveling. To me, this is what matters, but it's completely different for or ev everyone, essentially. Um, so we touched on a lot of uh, good things here. Is there anything that uh, you want to add? And I also want to give you an opportunity to, you already mentioned the uh, the welcome page and everything, anything, um, you know, mention where they can get the book and things like this kind of plug what you want to want to plug here. 
you know, they can go and, and order the book. Obviously, just, you know, I, I think they'll love the book. Uh, it's been, you know, Brian Tracy, I don't know. Um, some of you are probably familiar with Brian Tracy. He wrote the introduction to the book. And uh, yeah, Brian Brian was an inspiration to me as a younger entrepreneur, you know, 22 years ago. And so it's really kind of cool to have him write the intro. But I, I know that people will love the book. So just go get the book. You can also, if you go to entretribe.com, and again, that link, I Hyper Growth Zone, um, you can get to our main site that way as well. But uh, there's other resources they can download there and, and order the book from there as well. That'll lead them. That'll lead them wherever they need to go when it comes out. That's right. Yeah, that's a great thing about a, a book as well. Um, is then you can share, like you said, your personal stories. You know, point them in different yeah. directions, and people can really get to know you as a person, what you value, your personality, and all these things. So, thanks for writing a book. I love connecting with other authors and stuff, and you know, sharing your wisdom with the world. That's what really matters, I think. And I appreciate you coming on the show, Aaron. Yeah, it's been fun. Appreciate it. I'll have to take care. You as well. So thanks for listening. And wherever you listen to this podcast, please rate the podcast so it can get into the minds of more people. And I'd love to hear your feedback. And I hope to see you on the next episode.